you're eating out by a friend, a relative, your parents, your wife's parents, a brother-in-law, a brother, a sister, a friend during one of the nights of Hanukkah, and the question comes up, where should you be lighting Hanukkah candles? Should you be lighting upon your return home? Or may you light, or should you light, in your current location, by the meal that you are a guest by in the home of your friend or relative? The advantage of lighting d before the meal begins, or middle of the meal upon the time of lighting arriving, while you're at your friend's or relative's home, is you're supposed to light the Hanukkah candles at a certain time, and you get to light it at that time, instead of waiting until much later at night when you return home. Second of all, there's a prohibition against eating a meal prior to lighting candles. And if you wait to light candles until you get home, you're not, you're not allowed to join the meal to eat the meal. And the whole purpose of why you came to your friend's or relative's home is left unfulfilled. On the other hand, despite the above advantages, perhaps halachically, you're not yet say if you light candles in someone else's house. It's not your house, you're a guest. You have to light candles in your own personal home, so you must wait till you return home. And you're going to have a problem now in starting a meal in eating a meal until you do so, until you light candles. So what does it say in Halacha about this issue? So we have a clear ruling of the Ramah in chapter 677, Halacha 1, that if a person eats in one place, but he sleeps in another place, he lights in the area that he eats. So it seems from here that one can mistakenly learn that in our scenario that we brought above, one should specifically light candles, as says the Ramah, by your host's home, by your family, by your relative, by your friend that you're eating by. And not wait till you come home. But this is incorrect, as explained in the Paiskim, the Nisikhele. The above ruling of the Ramah is limited, qualified to a case that on a steady basis throughout the year, you have an area for sleeping and an area for eating, which are two separate homes, such as dorm people who live in dormitories, college students, yeshiva bachram, seminary girls. They eat in the dining room, which is one building, and they sleep in their dormitory, which is another building. There, says the Ramah, light in the area that you eat. A man's mainstay is where his steady food is served. However, in our scenario, you happen to be out for a night of Hanukkah to eat by a friend's home, by a relative's home. In such a case, say the Paiskin, you must return home to light the candles. You cannot light the candles at your current location. So rules the Magan of Raman 677, Allah 7, the Taz, the Knesset, the the Mishnah, the the Kafachaim, and many me Paiske Dereinu. And this is the final halacha, one must return home to light the candles. And therefore, accordingly, what one should do is he should initially arrange not to come to a friend's meal, to a relative's meal, Hanukkah party, until first you've lit your candles at home, fulfilled your mitzvah, and then you can go join whatever party you want. However, what's the reason behind this ruling that the Pais Gamal bring that you have to return home to light? What difference does it make where I light the candles? The main thing is I did the mitzvah, I lit the candles. What's the difference if I did it in my house or if I did it by my host? So the Bach writes that the reason is that if a husband goes to an only men's Hanukkah party, he's taking only himself, not his wife, not his kids, and he lights the candles in his current location, his kids are going to say, his wife's going to say, what, we don't like Hanukkah candles on the second night of Hanukkah? This is an Isra of Chashad, suspicion, Marasayan. So therefore you have to go back home to your family and light candles. That's how the Bach explains the reason why you cannot light by your host, you have to go home. Alternatively, another explanation as is brought in the Taz 677 too, that the entire chi of obligation and mitzvah of lighting Hanukkah candles specifically in the area that you live in. In other words, there isn't just a chi of that every Jew has to light Hanukkah candles. In addition to that, the chi of the obligation is, is that every Jew has to light Hanukkah candles in his house. And thus here, since you're a guest, this isn't your home, you don't eat here on a steady basis, you must go back to your home and fulfill the mitzvah in your home. So it was understood from the Taz, and he says, lighting by this meal would be similar to a person lighting in middle of the street, which of course has no relevance to the mitzvah. And therefore he says, those who choose to light in the, in the, by the meal of the host are making a mistake. So these two explanations are very different from each other, and have a massive ramification l'halacha. According to the Bach, that the entire reason behind the prohibition of lighting where you're staying is because of Chashad, Maris Ayn. What's your family that stayed home going to say? What if one went with his whole family? The husband, the wife, the children are coming to the grandparents, the husband's parents, the wife's parents. 
for a Hanukkah meal, a Hanukkah party, they're all there together. Or if you're by a friend's or another relative, all together, the whole family. According to the Bach, there's no suspicion here. The family's going to say, well, we don't like Hanukkah candles on the second night of Hanukkah. They see, they're all there by the meal. They see you lighting for them. And practically so rules some of today's post in the Kenyan Torah in volume 5, Chuva 72 rules that the entire ruling of the above post we mention, who require one to return home and light, that's only if he left his family at home. But if his family came with him, he may choose to light at his current location. However, according to the Taz, and other places, it's implied even in such a case, you must return home to light. As we said before, the Chiv is on your house. So practically, Allah Chalamai said, what should one do? So to summarize the entire Allah, if you're eating out one of the nights of Hanukkah, and you're leaving your family at home, your wife and children, or just your children, you and your wife are eating out, the Paiskim rule that you must return home to light candles before continuing your meal. So therefore, initially arrange not to leave the home until you lit candles. In the event that you came with your own family, or you're coming with your own family to eat by someone else's home by a night of Hanukkah, then this matter is disputed amongst the Paiskim as to whether you are allowed to light candles in your current location, you must wait until you arrive home. And practically due to the dispute, one is to wait until he arrives home to light the candles. So in summary, in all cases that you're eating out, make sure to light at home either before you leave or after you, or after you return, not where you're staying. However, the question is asked, what do you do about the meal? You're not allowed to eat a meal till you light Hanukkah candles. You have to wait till you get home. I'm not going to get home till late. Some people, they went to another city for the Hanukkah party. They can't just drop by at home, light the candles, and come back. So in this case, one is to appoint a shamer, someone to remind him to light candles, and just like a shamer helps us to allow eating prior to other mitzvahs, so to before lighting candles, it helps, and this shamer will make it both permitted for this family, this individual, to eat until he comes home and lights the candles. Thank you for listening to shulhanarcharav.com. Our free services of making Torah knowledge available to the public depends on donors like you. Please help us continue our work through making even a small contribution at www.shulhanarcharav.com under the daily Halakha dedication section or in the subscription page. Also, check out our online courses and many safarim available for purchase that will both enhance your Torah knowledge and help support our work. 